so i am uh, recording this lecture as a follow up to lecture 3 I, i thought that since there were some questions on canvas maybe i'll try to answer them using these videos so one of the question was that why is it the case you know regarding this 5 divided by 4 when i write 5 and 4 so why doesn't it automatically converts it into the floating point and takes the answer as 1.25 and there are multiple reasons so one thing is that you can think of this in some sense as a feature given by the language that whenever you have uh, you know some number and then you want to divide by another number and if it is a integer division you, you can think of this as a quotient function that you know two numbers a divided by b both a and b are integers you want to find the quotient of that but also i would like to bring to your notice that uh, i have as i have shown in this code that uh, because float is also 32 bit int is also 32 bit and half of the valid values of float is inside minus 1 to 1 and that means that by pigeon or principle there would be multiple values of int that is outside this range which will map to the same corresponding floating point value so that means that every time when you do a divided by b you convert to float what might happen is that you may get an imprecise answer right because the a may not be precisely be captured or b may not be precisely be captured so for example we see in this example right so both int max and int max minus 1 so these are two different values for example for an integer division so let let me do one thing uh, right so let us just try to print the integer division over here of these two numbers thinking of this as a quotient operator what's going to happen is that this is going to be uh going to be the answer is 1 okay then now if i change this to this value then the answer is 0 right so it makes a makes a huge difference but if it is floating point numbers you see that both the values over here comes out to be the same so let's just try to see that what happens if we do that right so let me just uh, say that let's say f is equal to int max and f1 is equal to int max minus 1 and now let's try to print the floating point division of these two number and i'm going to print f divided by f1 so floating division comes out to be 1 which is f divided by f1 so this part is fine and now let me just change this to f1 divided by f and see the result is again 1 so you see that it is not always a good idea to convert this division into the floating point hoping that uh, the loss of precision can happen because you convert it to floating point right so because here the floating point division no matter whether i do f1 divided by f or f divided by f1 the result is coming out as 1 whereas you see that there is a difference of you know 0 and 1 between between these two values right so i hope that this part is clear that that is the reason the language provides two different interpretation of this division that when both of the operands are int you do the int division and when the both or one of the operand is float so that is you are indicating to to the computer that i am interested in a floating point division in which case 
another number is also converted to floating point and the floating point division is performed. So either you can do 5.0 divided by 4 or you can do 5 divided by 4.0 as long as one of the operand is uh, floating point or double it's going to use you know float or, or double uh, double precision division right so i hope that this question is clear that why 5 divided by 4 uh, so because that expression is entire integer so that evolution happens and then if the target type is is a uh, is a floating point uh, variable then it is converted to floating point so the one is evaluated over here and then after one is evaluated then you convert to floating point so one converted to floating point becomes 1.00 uh, something so i hope that that is clear that uh, it not necessarily is a good idea to convert every time uh, for a floating point uh, so both the conversion from int to float as well as float to int so so we have seen over here can cause loss of information Right. So from float to int, it's very obvious because the fractional part is terminate. But what is not so obvious is that when you convert an int to float, that time also the information loss happens, as we have seen in this example. Uh, now there was a lot of there are a lot of questions regarding the rounding error. That why the rounding error comes, uh, right? So I I I divided uh, you know two point uh, two point. 25 divided by 0 0.15 and the answer instead of being 15 it came out to be uh, 999 and so why, why does a rounding error happen so now you see the rounding error happens because our representation of this number is finite I, I think some people try to answer that because it is in binary and certain numbers cannot be exactly represented in binary uh, but well that, that's not true so it doesn't matter what the base of your numbers are whether it is a you know base 2 or base 10 or base 16 or or any other base as long as your representation is finite there is always a chance that the rounding error will creep in so that's a, you know in schooling you might have studied about about errors and how uh, you know errors creep in in calculations and so let me give an example so assume that we are taking in base 10 system and assume that you know my universe is only uh, a single digit uh, after the decimal point and so essentially it's between 0 and 1 and just single digit right so so the things that i have is 0 0.0 0 0.1 0 0.2 and so on up to 0 0.9 this is my representation if you see that you multiply 0 0.9 to 0 0.9 now what happens i'm typically in mathematics where these so-called you know finiteness of representation etc uh, that limitation is you can try to avoid that 0.81 but the thing is that 0.81 is not allowed right i mean you are only allowed one digit after a decimal point so what you might do you might say that it's 0.8 so the moment you did that this this rounding happened the moment this rounding happened you have a loss right so this is rounding error it's a rounding error of you know 0 0.01 and this can become worse so for example if you have numbers like 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.5 now what happens so the answer is 0 0.45 but now you have a problem you are only allowed single digit after decimal and depends on how you go about it the answer can either be 0.4 or 0.5 right so so you have an error of 0 0.05 and and that error as a percentage of final answer is quite huge right i mean so 0 0.05 is a big percentage of 0 0.4 it is 10 percent of 0 0.5 so it's a huge rounding error and rounding error happens because your representation is always finite it does not matter what base you take as long as your representation is finite rounding error is always going to come the remedy is that you can try to use high precision types higher precision types so instead of float you may want to use double 
or instead of double you may want to use long double or there are libraries which are called uh, arbitrary precision libraries like gmp lib uh, right so one of there are there are a lot of such libraries are available gmp is one of them so i'll put this uh, link in uh, in the description but the thing is that there is a cost involved with higher precision the higher the precision is your computation may become slower so assuming a floating point being a, being a 32 bit because as higher you go see for example uh, if the single digit multiplication you can do it on your mind so you can think that you know if i do it in my mind it's going to be very quick that okay what is 9 by 5 it is 45 but if i give you you know two digits multiplication now now you might probably have to work out on pen and paper and similarly so for the higher precision numbers your floating point unit which is there in your processor might have to simulate for higher precision may have to do and arbitrary precision libraries do it you know just like you do with pen and paper this, this long multiplication etc so similar things these libraries involve operations there too so there is a trade-off that whether you want higher precision or you want better speed Typically what happens is that the higher the precision is, the speed of your computation decreases and typically the integer operations, integer arithmetic is typically faster than floating point operations and similarly you know, within floating point the higher the precision is, the computation may become slower. And the rounding error as I said that you, you cannot avoid as long as your representation is finite, you, you, you cannot avoid. Even in arbitrary precision libraries, it's arbitrary precision, but still, I mean, you know that you cannot write the value of pi, right? So there is always going to be a, a rounding error. Arbitrary precision libraries are also, you know, how much memory is available in your computer. So they are limited by that. So there is always going to be a rounding error. The precision is going to be very high. That means that the error, the values of the error, uh, the magnitude of the error might be very less, but there will still be a rounding error and that's, that's a fact of life. One has to be very careful as to, so if we are using things for very, very critical operations, you may want to use high precision numbers, even if cost of computation is higher. And let me quickly show you, and, and I'll also share a link, uh, that these are at least some of the disasters that are listed. So I'll share a link uh, to this page. I hope that you can see. And there are these very big disasters happened because of something went wrong with the floating point. So especially the quoted, you know, one very celebrated example is a Vancouver stock exchange where, where because of all this rounding, etc., the stock exchange completely, uh, you know, the index started by half and then the stock market collapsed and, and, very, and similarly, you can see that this rounding error changes the, the formation of the parliament so there are there are examples like this so when the stakes are very high whatever your program is doing you have to be very careful as to what you want and these are some of very old examples as you can see like 1992 1992 and this is also very old like 1996 Arian fire disaster that i mentioned in today's uh, uh, but this is relatively recent so this article was <coughs> written in october 30 so there is an autonomous race car and, and that car crashed. So, so this is an example that you know floating point arithmetic and computations are very very tricky. So in, in this car crash what has happened is that uh, some arithmetic resulted in the floating point being not a number. Right. So as I told you I, I had showed you an example during the lecture that uh, for certain values of exponent it was become infinity and after that if you do some operation it is still not a number it's not a valid number so all the operations and what was happening is that when they were trying to do data validation they were doing data validation only for the valid numbers so they never tested these kind of things uh, while during testing they never tested uh, as can be seen over here let me just increase the font size uh, they never tested for invalid numbers right only on the valid numbers they tested and uh, so it's it's a very important uh, so floating point arithmetic its representation how you model it how you mitigate errors etc so that itself is is a research area in itself and, and many many smart people are working on it 
but even as a programmer you should be aware of these nuances that floating point computations are not associative is rounding errors and you know very funny things can happen the loss of precision on either side from int to flow flow to int etc so you should be aware of these things so please please uh, be very observant and be very cautious uh, when you write program about these things because if you write program that can go into some critical system it can literally become matter of life and death so as we have observed that uh, rounding errors are something that is unavoidable but the c standard do provide and also uh, i think i triple e seven five four standard do provide some control over these errors it allows you for rounding a few rounding modes so one is round uh, to nearest whichever is the the nearest lower order number uh, that is available so you round to that so that means you know 0.81 if you have to round to one digit it will round to 0.8 uh, then there is round to infinity plus infinity so that means that 0.81 may get rounded to 0 0.9 uh, then there is around to negative infinity and this will matter if your num uh, so number is if the number is negative then it will go further away from zero uh, then there is round to zero so the rounding will happen in the direction where the zero is so these four rounding modes are available a and you can actually set it so you can uh, use this header f e n v dot h you can explain uh, explore this header so this allows you to read that what is the current rounding board and various aspects about the floating point you can also set it by default the round to nearest is used thank you very much